deliver. But the situation, according to him, has changed dramatically. Presently, there's more emphasis on how much money one can give to be retained or to win the next election. Well, the speaker uh, also says that even when one has been elected as an MP, the pressure on them from their constituents is unbearable. He says an MP can be all efficient and vocal on the floor. But if he goes to the constituency and does not pay money, the constituents will say, you'll be a one-time MP. So do Ajaho added that the monetization of the politics is the reason for the increasing challenges and corruption facing the country. Mm. Amazing. Yes. But he's been very truthful. Yeah, very truthful. Mm. Candid, they call it. Yeah. But the point is, if he was a member of parliament, would he have been candid? Now he knows his position is a bit insulated. So, but I guess he's the right person to be talking about. But this about is reality. It. True. Yeah, but we shouldn't just accept this and move on. We what need does to it do mean? Something about you know, it. if you're paying them to vote for you, I, I don't know who is to be blamed and how do we correct this? Mm. We have to correct it and move mm. on. I think Seriously. so too. We all do. Yeah. We all do. Well, uh, we have a lot of challenges, and one includes energy. Yeah. And the next few months uh, up to July will be very critical for the Akoso Bodam, which supplies the bulk of Ghana's electricity needs and for the energy crisis as a whole, unless there are enough rains to improve the water level in the reservoir. Mm. Let's tell you this, at the current level of some 244 feet, the Volta Lake is just four feet away from the minimum operating level of some 240 feet, at which point the dam would have to stop generating all electricity, including the 540 megawatt that it currently supplies. Well, that officials explain will mean a more intensified power rationing or, or low shedding timetable, uh, worsening than the current 24 hours without electricity that consumers are having to endure now. Well, planning and business development officer at the Volta River Authority, Kofi Ellis, who was speaking at Joy FM's Power Forum on Wednesday, said the situation has become especially critical because not much was done to avert the crisis after officials sounded the warning last year. Last year we had this problem and we were shedding with a certain pattern because the deficit that we were dealing with was 300 and below. So it was very manageable at the ECG level. When we were getting to the third quarter of last year, I quite remember VRA hinted that the water level has started misbehaving. What we're saying was that this level we should have turned at the end of July, as at middle of August, has still not turned, which meant that the water level was misbehaving, in quotes. I can show you some graph to show that instead of turning, it had gone way down that it had gone past the minimum curve that we're supposed to operate. And that is where we started sounding that the water has become an additional problem to the existing problem that we're having. And as a result of that, these machines can no more produce at full capacity because the level had gone too low. And for that reason, we're going to have some impact in 2015's supply. Well, Mr. Kofielis had a lot more to say. As he said, officials at the Volta River Authority have so far agreed to stretch uh, the dam just a little further, hoping that generation units that are being arranged by government and the VRA will become available to avert a total shutdown of their consumer dam. Mm. Here says, though, that funding remains a critical factor. We are in a, a situation where the thermal cost in this country is so high that the price that is paid for that thermal energy is so low. So if you're running a business, you want to balance it in such a way that you cut back on the losses as far as the selling of the product is concerned. Now, if I am not paid enough to cover the cost of running my thermal, and I have to survive as a company, I have to manage my hydrothermal resource in such a way that at the end of the year, I can be able to sell through my finances. VRA has been struggling through the management of these facilities because even the money to buy the next cargo has always been a problem. And if I want to go into that, that's a whole space of discussion. 
So I want to I want to live it like that. Mm. Well, we'll have to turn our attention to hell. Yeah, but can you imagine having to endure this blackout for more than 24 hours? I, I've had it consistently for three days. Really? Yes, before. I think twice. That so I'm, I'm, I'm used to it now already. No, you shouldn't be used to it. No <laughs> Ghanaian should ever be used to it. Well. But you see what I've been saying? It comes down to money. It's sure. money. Sure. It's money. I mean, so are they saying that we should fast and pray for the rains to come in July? Is that it? <laughs> you know? It's well. money. Uh, yeah, of course, but we have to move on. Now, health officials have raised concern uh, Accra could experience yet another cholera epidemic this year after the disease claimed some 150 lives the previous year. Well, out of 14 cases recorded since the beginning of 2015, four people are said to have so far died. A public health specialist with the Ghana Health Service, Dr. Imano Jochi, says the disease continues to claim lives in Accra because people are refusing to change their lifestyles. He was speaking at a forum on cholera organized by the College of Physicians and Surgeons here in Accra. According to the public health specialist with the Ghana Health Service, the number of cases are ramping up and is of major concern. The cholera outbreak that started since last year, June 2014, has continued. Uh, at the end of 2014, all the other regions uh, have no uh, had, are no more reporting cases. But Greater Accra is still having the outbreak. As, as at the 8th of February, that's the data that we have as at 8th, uh, they Greater. have reported this year four deaths uh, in Greater Accra region. The rector of the College of Physicians and Surgeons, Professor David Ofori Aj, says the recurrence of the disease, which is mainly a hygienic problem, is an indictment on the health system. Cholera outbreak is a severe indictment on the public health system of our country. It means that even if we know of the problem, even if we have the laws that could deal with the problems, the implementation of those laws, the implementations of those procedures are not being effectively implemented. And I think part of the equation is to find out how best to do this so that we can get this implemented. But above all, I think this is also a political problem. Chairman of the Health Committee of Parliament, Virginia. Joseph Yelechwe, however, believes with the right approach and attitude, cholera would be a thing of the past. It is about people taking their health serious and put, putting their responsibility on them. During this uh, uh, seminar, you heard the oh, government do this, government do this. But each one of us should say, my life is involved. What should I also do? And when you take that responsibility, should I wash my hands? Should I eat good food? Should I just buy food by the wayside? These are decisions that we make every day. So apart from government providing the environment that we think is congenial, individuals have a responsibility to do these things. Lukewarm attitudes of the citizenry and duty bearers has undoubtedly contributed to the shameful disease rolling on to 2015. And the fear is that if necessary steps are not taken, the next outbreak could even be worse. Well, Ghana's former president, Fried Lieutenant, uh, Flight Lieutenant Jerry John Rawlins, has in a meeting with the leadership of the Ghana Registered Midwives Association, charged midwives and other medical professionals to hold on to their values in spite of the difficult economic circumstances being faced by the country. Mm. And the former president uh, decried how the savagery of capitalism has brought in its wake huge difficulties that are destroying human values, but prayed that despite the challenges, midwives will continue to exhibit compassion in their chosen profession. The leadership of the Ghana Registered Midwives Association called on President Rawlins on Wednesday to invite him as guest of honor to climax their 80th anniversary celebrations to be held in August 2015. Uh, former First Lady and President of the 31st December Women's Movement, Nana Kunedu Ajemain Rawlins, also questioned the rationale behind the institutionalization of the concept of protocol allocation in nursing training colleges, universities, and other security services admissions, and linked it directly to the poor quality of professionals found in hospitals as well as other institutions in the country. 
Uh, we know that uh, some towns along the Keta Beach have been uh, victims of uh, or have been at the receiving end of tidal waves and mm. so we'll have to go to some of those communities and yeah. take a look at them. Our focus is on Hovi. It's mm. a town in the Volta region and it appears uh, it appears to have been completely deserted after tidal waves washed away scores of homes over the weekend. The National Disaster Management Organization has promised to send relief items to the affected residents who are currently putting up with friends and families in neighboring communities. Well, those affected say they would rather prefer they are also relocated so they can be spared the imminent threats of tidal waves from the sea. We'll bring a report by Matoda Pomoga. For years, Communities within the Keta municipality have been battling with the ravaging effects of the sea and the lagoon. Keji, Jita and Anyani were close to 15,000 people. After being completely cut off as a result of the tidal waves, have found new homes in the government relocation program. But there are other communities such as Hovi, who are now having to live with the threat of the tidal waves. After about a hundred of their homes were washed away, the residents were forced to move on. The National Disaster Management Organization says it has already been to the area to assess the needs of the victims and that help will soon reach them. Yeah, we have forwarded uh, these numbers to the regional coordinator. He also forwarded to the national coordinator for any action to be taken. Yeah, the only solution we can provide is just to give them some Live items uh, to give the movie for a meanwhile while the government looks for another solution to their problems. Ah, the situation like this, they, they are looking for, for at least bears, uh, food items, uh, plastic cups, plastic bowls, that to keep the movie for a meanwhile. But the residents are no longer keen on emergency relief. Hard uh, times, if the thing happened, they, they just came to give us some uh, uh, mattresses and some other things. But that will not solve the problem for us. Mm. We need, we, we want them to do something to the sea, so that like it, sea defense. Uh, like sea defense. Mm. Because we will be all, other than that, all of us will move from here to any other places, which we don't know. <laughs> Government should relocate us. Giving us relief items will not end our problems. If we have a place of our own, we can work hard to take care of ourselves. Uh, actually, uh, we've been eating every day. Uh, relief items will, do not, uh, will not do anything for us. You see, they will bring the food, we will eat hotness, nothing. If I'm not feeling comfortable and you give me food to eat, I can't enjoy the food. For me to, to take relief items without any place to rest, I don't think it's proper. According to residents, a sea defense project such as this one constructed from Keta to Aflau should put an end to the perennial washing away of their homes by the sea. For Joy News, Matilda Pomaga, Keta, Volta Region. I tell you what, Matilda Pomaga was also nearly washed away by the time. <laughs> Well, but on a, on a serious note, we think, and I'll call on leadership again, this is a serious matter. We just don't want you to go and inspect and not do anything. Mm. Yeah. And I've mentioned this, where you, you go to a lot more developed countries, or even countries in Africa, where the sea is, is a vital piece of land. And for us, it's a place that is ravaging people's homes and tearing apart people's lives. Mm -hmm. Doesn't make sense to many of us. Yeah. And this stretches there, eh? because from Keta to Angloga to Anyangi, you yeah. know, all those areas. Mm -hmm. This is serious. 
uh, we're talking about a uh, whole town. And not only that, sometimes mm -hmm. residents in Adai, et cetera, also face it. You exactly. Go to Tafari, you go to yeah. Maxine, we need uh, a sea defense. That's all we are asking. Right. Is that too much to ask yeah. for? She's Somebody's loving, listening. She's longing to become a member yeah. of parliament. But there's one more story before we bring <laughs> you the weather, and I want you to see it. Are you a fan of Madonna? Sure. The, the singer, the musician. At the Brit Awards, right? Yeah. Mm. Okay, sadly, she fell on stage. Oh. And I, yeah, she fell on stage. Uh, a day before I heard that she'll be performing at the Brit Awards. She fell? Yeah, she fell. She oh. fell. Claude was too tight at a point. She wanted to take it off. And it didn't work out. You know, because out. I'm an African, I, somebody did do am I tell you. <laughs> <laughs> So apparently this was, you know, well, the outfit. We'll call it this was the ah, outfit. Enyakwa, enyakwa. But guess what? You know, like the star that she is, she got up and finished the song. Sure. Yeah. And she issued a statement afterwards. Mm. Uh, but it was a lovely performance well. though. So I, I think the little lesson it teaches me, you know, even despite you everything, even when you fall. fall. Yeah, I could fall right now, you know, like right now. now but yeah. I just have to get up. But then, but, but then there's, there's a difference between what you're saying and what Madonna is saying. Madonna is taking millions of dollars to do that performance. So there's no way she'll fall and she won't get up. But when you're, when you're broke and you fall, sometimes when you don't have the money, getting yeah. up is difficult. But this is a 56-year-old woman, remember? It yeah, she, she, it I'm sure she does a lot of... Okay, so on that falling notes, uh, we end <laughs> the news. We'll bring you the weather. Can well, we be standing by? Yes, do see you.